Hey YouTube, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna give you real world supercharging times from a recent road trip I took. So somebody who I work with posed the question to me, I don't wanna wait an hour at the supercharger stations. And as soon as I showed him the map, he dismissed it almost right away, claiming that he's heard that it takes 40 minutes to an hour and a half to recharge a Tesla at a supercharging station. I knew that was way too long to recharge a Tesla at a supercharging station, so I gathered all that video evidence to share with you guys. A huge shout out to all of you that have recently subscribed. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot and it really helps support the channel. So a huge thank you to each and every one of you. Okay, now let's jump into the video. So I traveled from Washington DC all the way down to Ocean Isle Beach. Now that's a total of 417 miles, including the three supercharging stops on the way down. And that's because of my mistake. But as soon as the car was packed, we left bright and early in the morning. But before I went to sleep, I forgot to plug in the car. So my charge when I left the house was about 60% versus I would like to have left at 100%. No big deal though. We just have to make an extra stop. And if you have kids, you know that you're probably gonna make that extra stop anyway. So our first supercharging station is at a Wawa, which is pretty nice. It's very clean. As we're pulling in here, I do see this big diesel truck. Oh no, he must Rolling be- Rolling coal. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so we're gonna find a spot, not parking right next to somebody, because depending on how the supercharger is set up, it could slow down your speeds. Now I know that is different with version three supercharging that doesn't apply, but these are all version two chargers. O'Reilly Auto Parts product placement. I don't know about you guys, but every time I see a YouTube video, O'Reilly Auto Parts is always the ad that I have to watch before that video. And shout out to all of you that are putting up with the ads in this video, especially the mid-roll ads. Thank you very much. It does support the channel. So our first supercharging stop, we get in at 724 at around 14% battery. It's telling us 20 minutes, but if you guys have kids, you know that it's gonna take a lot longer. As soon as we get inside, I'm gonna grab some coffee. My daughter grabs a donut, and we're gonna also get some other food and use the bathroom. So I know that we're gonna be here a lot longer than 20 minutes. I wanna give a huge shout out to Sentry Mode right now because it's great to have a car that is actually watching all of our stuff in a place that we're not used to parking our car while it is charging and while we are inside away from the car. Really awesome. So 7.33, the car is ready to go. That means we have enough charge after nine minutes of charging to head to our next destination. Although the car is still plugged in because as you can see here, we are not ready to go. So we went inside, everybody used the bathroom that could, but now the baby does need a chiper change, which you can see happens in the front trunk or the frunk because it's the most convenient spot to change the baby's diaper. Now, once that's done, everybody's all wrapped up. Everybody's got a donut. Dad's got coffee, baby's changed. A lot of time's gone by. We do have a time for one more picture that my daughter wants to take in the supercharger. It's now 7.45 before we unplug and we're ready to go. That's 21 minutes later. So the car was ready in nine minutes and we were ready 21 minutes later. So we are heading now on the road to our next destination. So again, how cool is that, that the car was ready to go after only nine minutes, but with kids, we had to stop for a total of 20 minutes. So here we are going from our next segment from just outside of Richmond down to Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and we are at that charger now at 917 with 23% charge. Typically, you'll get to the next supercharger with about 10% charge, but that extra time that we spent at the last supercharger gave us this extra charge. So again, we're probably gonna be over on the time, so the Tesla's gonna be ready before we are because everybody has to use the bathroom, the baby needs another diaper change, so the car is gonna be waiting on us instead of us waiting on the car to charge. So the time is now 9.28 and we have enough charge to reach our next destination after only 11 minutes 
of charging. But of course we aren't ready to go yet. I was busy feeding the baby, so now I need to use the bathroom. So I set my toddler up with the Beach Buggy 2 racing game so she can have some fun, play the racing game while it's my turn to go use the bathroom. So if you haven't played Beach Buggy Racing yet and you do have a toddler or a young child, this is a great way to pass time at the superchargers, of course, until version 10 comes out and all they wanna do is watch Netflix and YouTube from the car screen. So as soon as I get back, I do my duty, wave to other Tesla drivers, of course you should too, and we are ready to hit the road. So the screen will actually switch over. You can see it says 40 minutes remaining, and that's just until we get to 100% what I have it set at. The time that you saw before where it said five minutes is the time that it takes to charge to get to your next destination. That 40 minute time frame is until it's gonna reach 100%. So you can see we're just about ready to go. I'm putting the DVD player together so my daughter has something to watch on our next, next leg of the journey. It is now 940, so we charge for a total of 23 minutes. So we have plenty of, plenty of juice to get to the next charger. So our next charger, we're going from Rocky Mount all the way down to Wallace. Of course, the best part about taking a Tesla on a road trip is the Navigate on Autopilot. You can see there, it took the exit for me with ease. The great thing about Autopilot is when I reach my destination, I'm not fatigued when I get there. So we're pulling into our last supercharger on this road trip before we reach our final destination. And we are going to, of course, not park next to anybody else, get this nice end spot here and plug right in. So we got here at 11.12 with 31% charge. This should be a pretty quick stop for us because the baby is actually asleep. So everybody's just gonna jump out real quick, use the bathroom, and we have plenty of charge to get to our next destination. So even with us planning for this to be a very, very quick stop, if you have kids, you know it never ends up that way. So now at 11.19, the car is ready to go. You can see it's switched over there after seven minutes. So now it's gonna fully charge the vehicle. So it transitions from that five minute counter over to that 25 minute counter. That 25 minutes meaning that it's gonna take 25 minutes for the battery to be fully charged. So now at 11.28, we are ready to go after 16 minutes. So we're up to about 74% charge and we are gonna unplug and be on our way. I wanna show you guys here where it says how much the supercharging costs. I do have free supercharging miles, thanks to all you awesome folks that use my referral code, but once you put it in drive, you'll notice there, it'll actually zero out. So if you're using free supercharging miles also, and you see that dollar amount there, don't worry about it. So that last supercharging stop gave us plenty of juice to get all the way to the beach. So we are spending seven days at the beach, so charging off a 110 outlet is plenty, even going from 27% all the way up to 100%. It takes 24 plus hours, but we're gonna be there for a whole week, so it's no big deal. My car just stayed plugged in while we were out and about the entire week. So this is our route that we took going back. We only had to stop at two superchargers because I charged all the way up to 100%. So we didn't have to stop at that extra supercharger. I'm only hoping that my toddler's bladder will hold. I know that my wife and I can hold our bathroom breaks a little bit longer than my daughter can. So really crossing my fingers that we don't have to make an unplanned stop and the only stops that we make are at superchargers. So if you have young kids, it actually makes sense to stop more. Now we did leave way, way early. You can see the sun just starting to come up and this is our first leg of the journey from Ocean Isle Beach. We're passing that Wallace charger that was the last stop that we stopped at and we're going to our second stop on the way down, which was that Rocky Mount North Carolina's charger. So here's what our screen looks like heading into the Rocky Mount supercharger. And it does say that we're gonna get there with about 7% charge, which is fine. You can see we have the whole supercharger all the way to ourselves. And I'm gonna go ahead and park in the same spot as we did last time. If you recall, this is the charger where I let my daughter play beach buggy while I went inside to use the restroom. So we are gonna hop out of the car. We have 4% charge and we are going to charge up starting at 7.50 in the morning. 
and this is going to be a pretty big stop for us because both kids are awake now and they kind of woke up in the car so we are going to actually head in there is a nice hilton over here where we went in was able to feed a bottle to our baby and get some breakfast for everybody. Also some much needed coffee for me. So what I'm pointing out here is we're actually gonna go to the Glen Allen that is just north of Richmond versus last time we stopped just south of Richmond on our way down. So I did notice at this version two supercharger we were actually pulling just under 60 watts. And now on our trip down, I did run into somebody that was having that same trouble. So at 8.15, the car is ready to go after 25 minutes of charging. So by far our slowest charge rate, but still the car, we weren't waiting for the car. We just got back to the car, we were ready to go, and the car was ready to go also. Now, if I was more vigilant and noticed this slower charge rate, I could have picked any of the other chargers to charge at. I wanna point out again, it does show a balance there for supercharging, but because I'm using free supercharging miles that were awarded to me through the referral program, it does zero out once I hit and drive and start driving off. So we are off to our next destination and our last supercharging stop, which is that Glen Allen, Virginia supercharging stop. So we're coming up from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, to north of Richmond, Virginia, to that Glen Allen supercharger. And like I said before, we like that one because there is a Panera Bread and it's a great stop for kids. There's actually a Koi Pond and it's a really good supercharger. So here we are parked, getting ready to plug in, throw the car in park, and we are going to plug in. We are at 16% charge. Now this is not gonna be just a bathroom break for us. Everybody's gonna sit down and have some food. So we're definitely gonna be lasting longer than the car needs. So at 10.05, we start to charge. But of course, you guys have seen the trend here. The baby does need another change. So what do we do? We utilize the front trunk, which if you haven't done so yet and you have a baby, use the front trunk next time you need a diaper change. It's really gonna make your life a lot easier. So Panera really isn't fast food, but we're not in a rush. Again, we have a couple kids to feed and all that. So I log into the Tesla app and I can conveniently see where the car is at as far as how full it is in supercharging. And it says we still have 10 minutes remaining. And because we're not in a rush, I go ahead and turn on the climate control. Now, if you were in a rush and wanted to maximize range or maximize uh, or reduce the amount of charge time that you were doing, you would not want to turn on climate control unless you were really going to utilize it because it does use more electricity to run the climate. So some time has gone by and now we're at 63% and we are getting ready to flip over from five minutes to continue on your trip to that mark where it's going to jump to whatever the time is for the car to be fully charged. So like I showed you guys previously, it never goes to zero minutes because of where that had the charge limit set all the way up to 100%. Actually here at 1021, it jumps to 40 minutes remaining. So that only took 16 minutes and the car was ready to go after supercharging. And you can see it's pulling about 80 kilowatts at this charger at 64% charge. So after 16 minutes, of course, we are not ready to go. It does take us some extra time before we're ready to go after eating and all that. It is now 10.33, so we spent a total of 28 minutes charging at this supercharger. So again, the car did beat us before we were ready to go. So this is now our last leg from north of Richmond all the way up to Washington DC. They're our last leg of our trip and we we're able to make it with plenty of charge. If you guys haven't done so yet and do like this video, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be notified of all my new videos. Okay, so let's see all this information compiled up. So you can see here we left the house at 60% charge and at our first supercharger the car only needed 9 minutes and we stopped for 21 minutes. So again, the car beat us there. The supercharger in Rocky Mount needed 11 minutes and we stopped for 23 minutes. 
supercharger in Wallace, we stopped for seven minutes and the car needed 16 minutes. So coming back from the beach to Washington DC, we left with 100% charge, so we cut down on one supercharger. Our first supercharger was in Rocky Mount. The car needed 25 minutes and it took us 25 minutes, but like I said, with that supercharger, I think was not operating properly. So our second charger was 16 minutes and we took 28 minutes. So for 834 miles, we had total charge time required of 68 minutes. That's the minimum time that the car needed, but we actually took 113 minutes of actual charge time. Now I will say, of course, doing this with kids is not ideal, and if you were going for speed, you would just be going by yourself and pee in a Gatorade bottle, but that's not what we did. I hope this video shows you that supercharging doesn't take that long, and it's a lot faster than a lot of people who don't own a Tesla perceive. So if you found this video helpful, or if you know somebody who also assumes that supercharging takes forever, please share this video with them. If you like this channel and you like the videos, please consider going over to Patreon and supporting this channel for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much to all of you that have already gone over there and decided to support this channel. It really does mean a lot. I want to give a special shout out to our man Amin and Akram Atul. They are both supporting me at the all electric level. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video with a friend, and I will see you guys in the next one.